Well then, it's been a while and welcome to this video. This video will need some explanation before we jump into it. First off, as the title implies, I want to just ask about what if a certain thing gets added. I don't want to say if something should or should not be added. I just want to talk about what needs to be taken into consideration and what should be thought of if something gets added. Secondly, I'm well aware that this video will most likely age poorly. The subject of this one and perhaps a few others could be seen as controversial or somewhat taboo within the naval community, but that's also why I want to make a video on these subjects. Carriers in particular have been brought up more and more ever since we first saw the scout planes on Graf Spee in the dev server update Red Skies. While I have my own opinion on whether carriers should be added or not, that's not really what I want to present here. I want to make this video to share how I believe carriers could work in this game, the questions that arise when you look closer, and so that we can discuss this subject a bit more openly. Be it in the comments of this video, and oh boy I'm already looking forward to those, or on forums or in other forms of social media. Because most of you that are part of the naval community may already have experienced a strong, jaded hatred or perhaps naive love towards the idea of aircraft carriers being introduced. So let's just have a chat about it. And lastly, and perhaps more importantly, I'm just some dude that plays the way too much War Thunder and has made videos on its naval mode as a hobby. I'm in no way, shape or form an authority on this subject, so please forgive any mistakes I may make. So, shall we get started? Let's say the first dev server for update flat tops rolls out, and we got our hands on a carrier. Let's not talk about a specific carrier just yet, but I did use IGN Ryujo as a stand-in for the time being, with some basic information here. But I'll just refer to her as carrier for this part of the video. Of course, we want to see what carriers are all about. So we take the carrier out for a test drive. We don't particularly care about the ship's performance just yet, but what we do want to know is everything to do with the air group. And first things first, the HUD. What information is at your disposal, what can you do with it? This will just be my idea, so I'll use a healthy dose of imagination. The HUD isn't just a single element. There would be several things that I think would be good features, and first of which, we'll look at the spawn screen. The option of selecting how many of which aircraft and in what order they are on the deck. Also take into account maximum deck capacity for takeoffs. I think this could work in a similar fashion as to how you select numbers of shells you carry in your guns, and what order they are. Though not quite as free, as some aircraft would require longer takeoff runs. Maybe it'd be better idea to not mess with the takeoff order, but just the presence of aircraft on the deck. But then there's also the question of if you were to not choose any attackers, like in this screenshot, if you would be able to have more fighters on the deck. But then we run into other problems we'll talk about later. Then, when we've spawned in, the first thing that should be obvious is the launch button, which I envision to be similar to the float plane's launch button already in the game. Though instead of directly launching an aircraft, maybe it brings up a menu of some sort. Though I'm not sure what it should be. Then, there's a little ship model in the bottom left of the screen. I don't think there's much to add to it other than maybe some sort of aircraft counter to keep track of the total number of aircraft your carrier has access to. Then, there would probably be a HUD element that would need to display the status of the aircraft or aircraft groups. And that's something which I really don't know how to do. Let's talk about that part a bit more as it's also linked to some of the most crucial parts of aircraft carriers. Aircraft management and control. This is probably one of the more complex aspects, but there are other games with functioning carriers, though with wildly different models. World of Warships probably being the most famous of both an RTS and the current model. Then there's also the Battle Stations games, though I'm personally not familiar with those, but we will still use them for inspiration. So what would work in War Thunder? Genuinely, I don't know what should. But I personally want to be in control of a carrier, not a collection of aircraft. And of War Thunder being somewhat more realistic, we'll keep that in mind. So let's brainstorm a bit. On our current carrier, we have an air group of 18 combat ready fighters, as well as 12 torpedo bombers. And these aircraft types each have 4 spare aircraft too. From the spawn screen, we know that our deck capacity is 9 fighters and 6 bombers. And we so happen to choose to have 9 of the 18 fighters on deck. How do we manage all of these aircraft? This one question is probably the most difficult to answer, or at least get one answer. This one question has led me to rewrite part of the script several times over, as even I can't agree on what is the best solution. Personally, again, I want to be in control of a carrier, 
so I'd like to see quite a few options when it comes to handling aircraft on the ship. But what do you do with them? Do you prepare and launch individual aircraft, or perhaps fixed size groups? Should the size of these groups then be different between carriers, between nations, or should they be uniform? If they are not uniform, would the preparation time be a balancing factor then? Could you cancel preparations somehow, or change them? Could you launch air groups that are no longer at full strength, and what on earth do you do with multi-purpose aircraft? Something like the Japanese B-5N, which could be either a torpedo bomber, or a relatively high altitude level bomber, depending on its payload. I am genuinely lost on these questions on how to manage aircraft on a carrier, but surely once you get some aircraft in the air it'll be simpler, right? Yeah, not really. Again, how many aircraft do you launch? How do you order them? In my personal opinion, I don't think it's good to be in control of an entire air group yourself. I just think it isn't quite fit with War Thunder, because then you're just controlling a group of aircraft and not a carrier. So let's assume that these aircraft, if again it's a group that you're launching, are under control of AI, with maybe the option to jump into one aircraft similar to how you can jump into your float plane nowadays, you'd just not be in direct control of the group. So alright, you'll have to give these groups orders. How and what orders should you be able to give? Maybe you'd have a HUD element representing the group and that would also display the general status of the air group, such as aircraft number and what they're doing. When it comes to what they can do, that's obviously different between aircraft types, so let's return to our test drive for a moment. We have 9 fighters on deck, and let's say, to keep things simpler, that we just launched the full group and that they're a single group in the air under our control. How did we launch them? Do they just take off, form up and circle the carrier by default and then give them orders? Or do you press the takeoff button and then immediately give them orders, and what orders can you give? For fighters they could protect ships, air groups or certain areas. Or maybe you can send them into attack, as there are fighters that could carry ordnance like the F6F Hellcat for example. What would you do with them? They could carry torpedoes, bombs and rockets, as well as none at all. Especially when it comes to the torpedoes, because torpedo bombers and fighters fulfill quite the different role. When it comes to attack aircraft of any type, what order do you give them? Attack any target in the area? Would you instead maybe give them target priorities? Maybe you instruct them to preserve their aircraft as much as possible? Or go in suicidal charges? Should one air group target a single vessel, or could they split off? I genuinely don't know. But when it comes to how you give them orders, maybe a menu similar to the multifunction or chat commands menu could work. Though there are probably more streamlined options out there. Maybe something like the deck being the main armaments group, so to speak, and then having a toolbar unique to it with individual squadrons marked on it. But I don't know really. But now, let's return to our test drive again. We've somehow figured out how to manage our aircraft on the carrier. We go to launch them via the command, then what happens? Do we have to sail into the wind? How long does it take to launch aircraft? What about catapults? All questions that need answers. Though I don't think takeoff procedures will be that troubling. Okay, our fighter group is finally in the air and is following the orders you gave them. Should you be able to change these orders? Should you be able to immediately recall the aircraft to the carrier? If they cannot land for some reason and are flying a holding pattern, should you be able to send them out again? That depends, I guess, on how much freedom you want to give the carrier player. But it is with landings that we hit a bit of a snag. Landing procedures are pretty straightforward, but they are far from easy. Should landings be able to fail, as in an aircraft crashing on the deck? How long would this obstruct the deck for? And even if you land all your aircraft, what about rearming? Some navies rearm them on the deck and then immediately place the planes back to launch. But that could limit you as the deck of some carriers have less capacity than the carrier itself. So should you restrict the carrier's capacity to purely its deck capacity? Should rearming just not happen on the deck, and maybe in the hangar? Would that make the turnaround of air groups too long? Should you again sail into the wind? Would that help with the failure charge of landing aircraft? Or should it have no effect? What if you want to swap armaments for aircraft? Can that happen on deck? Can that happen quickly? Many questions, again, that would need an answer, but again, we'll go back to our test drive. We've played around a bit and got the hang of most of the mechanical aspects of a carrier, and you can tell that it's quite a job to keep track of everything. So you leave the test cell and you look at your carrier in the hangar. First things first, what modifications does it get? Probably the usual, but there is a big question. Can I upgrade to better aircraft? 
a bit of a tough topic, as it is very satisfying to see your aircraft carrier get better and better aircraft as you upgrade it, and a lot of carriers did carry a variety of aircraft during their service. But I'm of the opinion that no, you should not be able to upgrade your aircraft, and most certainly not as drastically as this post would suggest. Maybe there can be an argument for just slightly better models of the same aircraft type, like going from a 4-gun F4F Wildcat to a 6-gun one, but any major disparities between a stock and spaded carrier when it comes to air power is a dangerous thing that we'll get back to later. Okay, any other major upgrades we can see? Not that I can think of, to be honest. So alright, we close that window. Next up, we look at the crew window. And here it can go either way. Either there's nothing new, meaning that the aircraft and crews will always operate at maximum efficiency on all carriers, when it comes to carrier operations, or we see a new tab for the air crews. And even then, what's in there can vary from perhaps more normal stuff like refuel and rearm speed. But if there's a crew skill called something like pilot skill, what would that affect? Would it affect takeoff and landing speed or even success rate? Would it change the effectiveness of fighter pilots? Would it meddle with the accuracy of strike aircraft? For that reason, I'd rather not have anything like crew skills for the aircrew, because it would affect the efficiency of a carrier too much, in my opinion. Though at the same time, the current crew skills are already a heavy influence on the efficiency of naval vessels. This is something I'm very conflicted about, because both of these possibilities seem plausible if we do ever see carriers. But alright, we continue looking at our carrier in the hangar. First, inspecting the armor. Then, perhaps more importantly, the X-ray view. In other words, the modules and damage model. Carriers are not designed, well, are mostly not designed to be frontline warships, and this is probably where you can see that the best. The upper parts of an aircraft carrier is predominantly hangar space. This can be one or more decks, depending on the vessel. Should you be able to destroy these modules? What would that do? Would that destroy the aircraft stored in them? Or would it just halt the rearming and refueling process? Would it be the same when it comes to elevators? Could they be knocked out? Could the flight deck be knocked out as a module? I assume so, but those are details that raise questions. And then there's also an important question. What about armament storage? Bombs, torpedoes, rockets, aircraft ammo, aircraft fuel. Where are these stored? How much is there? And how vulnerable are these to damage? You decide that you want to test these aircraft carriers out a bit more against some actual, you know, responding targets. So you invite a few friends of yours over into a custom battle, where still, aboard Yujo in this case, two of you are on one team in a carrier, and a third is feeling brave and goes into a selection of warships on the other team to be a target, so to speak. You load into the custom battle, and your buddy in the aircraft carrier next to you suddenly brings a question to light. What prevents our air groups from crashing into each other? This is perhaps not too big of a problem for our smaller carriers, but what happens when larger air groups and larger carriers are thrown into the mix? What will prevent entire air groups being lost because of crowded skies? This can be an argument for the World of Warships approach of having only a single air group per carrier up at a time, but I am not much of a fan of that. A possible answer is to give every carrier their own cruising altitude range for specific air groups, though that gets complicated quickly. And doesn't do much about takeoffs and landings. Then there's the option of making these aircraft not physically interact with each other, but that doesn't sound too good either, does it? But okay, the aircraft fly around with no problems, somehow. Then you run into a problem of sorts. Or well, it's more that your buddy in the cruiser runs into a problem as there are now well over a dozen attack aircraft heading his way. His problem now is, how do these aircraft attack his vessels, what can his vessel do about it, and most importantly, what is the success rate of the strike aircraft? This is most likely going to be the point of greatest contention for most of the naval community. What is the success rate for a carrier strike, especially when multiple carriers are involved? That depends on multiple factors, the number of aircraft, the number of aircraft that make it through the air defense of the target, the speed of the aircraft, and the number of ordnance it carries, and so on. But what should be the success rate of a single aircraft that makes it past the defenses? 1 in 3? 1 in 5? 1 in 10? And let's say that with this combined striking power of the two aircraft carriers, our buddy in the cruiser is being attacked by a strike of 40 aircraft. 
Let's say that our buddy wasn't in her usual, just think 40 strike aircraft. And for the sake of it, 40 torpedo bombers. In this scenario, even a chance of 1 in 10 would mean getting hit by one aircraft if he shoots down 30 of them. Then, how do the strike aircraft actually attack? When it comes to dive bombers, I think it's pretty obvious. But what about torpedoes? Do they all come from the same angle? Do they attack in groups? Or do they fly in individually from multiple angles? All these questions rattle through your mind as your buddy in the cruiser is fighting for his life. He wisely chose an American cruiser with a heavy anti-air suite and managed to somehow survive the assault. And when he's recovering from the attack, he suddenly remarks on something. It is currently meta in the game to not repair your secondary and tertiary battery, because when you repair these guns, the crew gets replaced and when they get knocked out again, you lose their crew again. So not repairing them prevents you from bleeding a lot of crew. This of course leaves people exposed to air attacks, but this is usually not that dangerous when there's only one attacking aircraft. But having aircraft attack you in the double digits is another story. And then there's also the problem of how AI gunners respond to threats. You see, every gunner on an A ship will usually target a single aircraft and only switch target when that aircraft is positively dead. This might not be the greatest problem when the strike planes are flying in close formation, but what happens if they split off and attack from different directions? Should the aircraft AI even be able to do that? Questions only keep popping up. But now you and your two bodies have done enough playing around in custom battles. You want to do an actual battle on the death server to maybe grind out some of the trees. These are usually rather empty, as battles on the death server usually are, but you notice something strange while in the queue. There seem to be a high number of people in it. Then you find a match. You allocate what aircraft you want on the deck, still talking with your buddies, one of which is on the enemy team. You spawn in and check the scoreboards. Surprisingly, 10 actual players on both sides out of the possible 16. But then you notice something else. Your entire team consists of carriers. For the sake of simplicity, it's all the usuals, because you're already familiar with the air group. Your buddy on the other team sees the same for his team. And you come to a realization. There are a total of 600 aircraft currently present on the battlefield, waiting to take to the sky. But remember, each Ryujo has 18 fighters and 12 torpedo bombers with 4 spares. There are 20 Ryujos, that's 600 aircraft. So, you hear the roar of engines and you see them take to the sky. And now comes what I suspect would become the meta very quickly if similar events were to occur on the live server. The team that rules the sky will destroy the other team. Fighters become your main resource for domination. Good placement of these air groups will become vital as each team fights for aerial domination. Losing this air fight means leaving your team exposed to well over a hundred strike aircraft. And remember, our Ryuja only carries 30 aircraft. That's a relatively small aircraft group for a carrier, especially if you compare them to fleet carriers. The furball that develops in the sky is intense, so much so that the servers will most likely not be able to keep up, as burning wrecks fall of the sky, planes collide, bombs and torpedoes are dropped and anti-air fire is thrown into the sky like crazy. This is a possibility that comes with aircraft carriers, and it's not even the worst possibility, as in this scenario, both teams were equal in number and strength. It can be so much worse. Some of you that played the upper BR brackets of Blue Water Vessels may have already run into battles where one team consists of many more battleships than the other. Now imagine that, but with carriers. Even if their hit rate was something like 10% for every aircraft can get through the air defense, with dozens if not hundreds of aircraft up, there will be hits. And a single torpedo or a single 1,000 pound bomb is not to be underestimated. Now, that concludes our hypothetical scenario on the dev server of Flat Tops. Depending on your viewpoint, this either sounded like a dream or a nightmare. But surely there aren't many of you that want to be on the receiving end of this punishment. But there are still things that I've omitted. And that will be for this next part of the video. Let's go over some more aircraft carriers, as well as questions and possibilities when it comes to balancing these naval monstrosities.
Alright, in this part we'll look at the questions that are more specifically interactive with the balancing of a vehicle. Questions that pertain to the general effectiveness of vehicles, questions which among many others would determine the battle rating of vehicles. So, balancing factors. These won't be in any real order, and will probably be me rambling on about things as this subject has become quite a rabbit hole I've dived into. You can ask the people in my Discord to attest to that. The first obvious thing that needs to be addressed is the air groups. I'll show you two carrier air groups that I've taken from the website Navypedia for the sake of argument. One is for IGN Kaga, the other is for HMS Illustrious. Let's not look at the numbers just yet, just the aircraft types themselves. For the Kaga we see the A2N fighter, the D1A1 dive bomber and the B2M torpedo bomber. For HMS Illustrious, we see Sea Fire Mark II Cs, Martlets, or otherwise known as American F4F Wildcats, and Barracudas. As you can tell, Kaga carries biplanes, and these aren't exactly cutting edge when it comes to naval aircraft that you may be familiar with. Compare them to HMS Illustrious's loadout, and those are quite a bit more modern. So, based purely off this, and if you have to choose, which would be the higher battle rating? Surely the better aircraft, right? Let's reveal the number, shall we? Would you still consider this specific loadout of Illustrious to be a higher battle rating than the specific loadout for Kaga? Sure, Illustrious has the fighter advantage hands down, just over double the number of fighters compared to Kaga. But Kaga has just over three and a half times as many strike aircraft. And these are a mix of dive and torpedo bombers, whereas Illustrious only has torpedo bombers. So, which one should have the higher battle rating? The advanced and large fighter group of Illustrious, or the larger, though less advanced strike group of Kaga? Or should it be of equal BR? But then you have a ship in itself to also consider. Kaga, in her triple flight deck configuration, has a broadside of 5 200mm guns, while Illustrious has a broadside of 8 140mm guns on each side. Should this be a factor battle rating wise? Or should it not? Would anti-air firepower be more important? And this is just scratching the surface of this debacle. There are many carriers out there, each of which usually had various aircraft complements throughout their careers. Is this something that should be reflected in the game? Should we be able to upgrade our aircraft, and if not that, where applicable, change the number of each aircraft type, maybe? Should there be a strike group focused and air control focused option for carriers? Maybe if you're familiar with the older system World of Warships, you know what I'm talking about. Should that be a thing for all carriers? Could there be a balanced option? What about so-called paper carriers like the German Graf Zeppelin or the Italian Aquila? They had planned complements as well. Should they be able to have varying numbers if it's even possible to begin with? On the topic of Germany and Italy, what do we know about nations with very few or no carriers? Britain, Japan and the US were major carrier users. But the other naval powers, not as much. There are several conversion plans for Germany, and of course their purpose-built carrier Graf Zeppelin, which could carry naval versions of the BF109s and Stukas. Italy started construction on a carrier Aquila, and had a naval version of the RE2001 as fighter bombers. And those would be the only planes it would carry. And again, what about aircraft with more than one role? Like, again, the Japanese B5N, which are torpedo bombers as well as higher altitude level bombers. How does it get accounted for in the battle rating? While you think of that, let's look at one of the earliest carriers, IGN Hosho. I'm sorry that I keep using Japanese vehicles, it's just that I'm a bit more familiar with them. Hosho, according to a loadout on Navypedia, could carry 9 A4N fighters and 9 B3Y torpedo bombers. So a small number of biplanes. What battle rating would the ship be? Just Hosho, on its own, just thinking about the game mode. Obviously carriers are blue water vessels, but where would a carrier like Hosho fit? Again, in this configuration, she has 18 planes total. That's it. And if we assume that at least in realistic, any plane lost is permanent, where do you place this carrier? When it comes to the ship itself, according to Navypedia, it has four 140mm guns, by the looks of it, two on either side. So it has half the armament of a Yubari, and it's not particularly fast either at 46km an hour. So, what BR? 
3.3 is the minimum for a blue water vessel, but that just doesn't feel right for a carrier, does it? I personally want to say like 5.0 and very maybe 4.7. But then we run into another problem. The opponents. How likely is it for the 9 biplane torpedo bombers to be shot down by any ship that you can think of at SBR? And that's not all. What about player-controlled aircraft at SBR? Any player aircraft at this BR bracket of 5.047 would wipe out these aircraft with no problem. So should these aircraft carriers just not be in the game? Or should they maybe really be a 3 point something ship? That just sounds wrong, doesn't it? And even then, a carrier like Horsho would probably not be effective with its torpedo bombers, especially just one Horsho. But at 3 point something, it may actually have just the gunpower to face destroyers. And remember, this is just one of the earliest carriers, what about the later ones? For example, USS Wasp, with again, according to Navypedia, one of the possible loadouts having 29 F4F Wildcats, 30 SPD Dauntlesses and 10 TBF Avengers. Or if you want to go even more extreme, USS Midway, 64 Corsairs, 4 Hellcats and 64 Helldivers. What do you do with that? What battle rating do you give it? And how do you prevent it from annihilating surface targets or a single player spawn aircraft wiping the floor with its air group? That brings up another interesting point. Where do we end? Where do we stop with carriers? World War II? Korea? Vietnam? Should we go post-war? It's basically the only area that Russia really has any carriers. Though that brings even more headaches. <clears throat> Helicopters. There are some World War II projects for them, but don't ask me what aircraft Project 71 and 72 carried. There are also American aircraft that carry multiple torpedoes, which is even more frightening. Where would the line be drawn? Where do carriers begin? Should we maybe begin with full-on World War II light carriers as an intermediate between the onslaught of fleet carriers and perhaps the weakness of the earliest of carriers? I do not have the answers for this, and I'm missing a whole lot of nuance that I just don't have the mental fortitude to consider. Wait, what's happening? I thought I thought we were done. No, 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 no. Don't even. No, not not battle carriers. No, what's no, no. Stop. No, no, no. Ah. Ah. Okay. Okay. Let, let's let's for, let's just forget that we saw that. Just no. Now, to summarize this madness of a rabbit hole. Mechanically speaking, there are a lot of questions pertaining to launch, recovery, arming, controlling, and so on. In my opinion, still, you should be in control of an aircraft carrier, not an air force. But these questions are not really about the possibility of these mechanics, but more the execution. I honestly believe that it would be possible to introduce carriers mechanically speaking. So there would be a lot of work, especially when it comes to AI, both of the aircraft and the anti-aircraft gunners. It is in balancing that it becomes a downright mess. Carriers aren't simple vessels, and in general they're powerful vessels too. And there are glaring problems that need to be overcome, or even thinking of considering them balanced. Most of which aren't even really the problem of any individual ship, though some of them are. I invite you to thoroughly think of even just one specific carrier you know of, and how it would be balanced so it feels right to both the carrier captain, the opponent, and your own teammates. In conclusion, what if we see carriers in War Thunder? Well, I don't know, I cannot tell you what would happen, but in my opinion it mostly depends on what carriers and what aircraft we'll see. Would I want to see them myself? Yes and no. Yes, from the standpoint of a naval fan. No, from the standpoint of a War Thunder naval player. Carriers are cool, interesting and beautiful vessels, but they're a rabbit hole that knows next to no bounds. Carriers, in low numbers per match, could be fine, especially the smaller or earlier carriers. But if there's no limit on them, then prepare your anti-aircraft gunners for the worst. Ah, <sighs> okay. I, th I hope that was informative, and I wanted to make this video to talk about the subject. Carriers have been coming up more and more ever since float planes were introduced, and I understand why. Why wouldn't you want to be at the helm of a carrier? They're awesome vessels. 
so invite anyone who wants to talk about it in the comments or in my Discord. Don't just bash the idea or blindly promote it, scrutinize it. Look for any question, any flaw, any possibility, any what if. Thank you for watching, goodbye, and may your seas be calm.